So, um, first of all, I don't know how I feel about falling behind Jared because I don't know if I'm as entertaining as he is. <laughs> but um, I do want to say this is an important step. I just bought a house in September. <laughs> so, the first step is getting information and learning. So, thank you all for being here. And I'm biased because I work in the community. So, welcome, potential um, neighbors to my office. Um, so, I'm going to be talking about a few things, why rent, why buy, and some of the issues that come into rental and purchasing, um, specifically purchasing in the city of St. Louis. So Dutchtown South um, currently manages rental properties that we own, but what most people don't realize is that we've also developed single family homes that we've been able to sell in at an affordable rate. So when we sell the houses that we've developed, we do not make a profit. We deliberately price them at a price point where, for instance, we currently have four houses we're working on. We're estimating that those houses' market value would be $350,000. We're not gonna sell them for over 200. So I just wanted to establish that to kind of give you a context about what I'm talking about and why we're involved in this particular event. So why rent? You're just not interested. There are a lot of people who have absolutely no desire whatsoever to own, and that's perfectly fine. Um, you may not be ready that might play into why you're not interested. But the other thing is there's cost for maintenance. You've got repair bills that you have to deal with, real estate taxes. Um, your utilities are cheaper when you rent. I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, and then depending on where you live, there may be amenities to it. You know, when I lived in another county in the St. Louis metropolitan area, I had a pool, I had a fitness center, I had walking trails. And I didn't have to worry about my water and trash. So as a single parent, that worked perfectly for me. But um, you're also not financially ready. But we're going to talk about that readiness because there are several things that play into that. So why buy? Um, and this is my own personal journey. I'm 50 years old. My house was my 50th birthday present to myself and to my son. I became a single parent when he was three years old, and at the time, I did not have the resources because I could juggle daycare bills or I could pay a mortgage. And the decision was made to pay the daycare bills and be able to put him in all the different things. My son is on the autism spectrum, working beautifully now, but at the time, I didn't know what I was going to have to do. So I wasn't ready, but I was very mindful of the fact that th I couldn't do a lot of things that I even needed to do for my child because someone else was controlling where I lived. So one reason to purchase is to have the freedom and the ability to control where you live. How does it look? Do you want to paint a mural in your child's room? Do you want to paint a mural in your room? Do you like unicorns and butterflies in your bathroom? You know, you can do those things if you own the house for yourself. Um, Long-term investment that can lead to credit and create generational wealth. So let's stick a pin in that. I know that when I pass away, there will be something for my child that if he chooses, he can sell it and be financially stable, or he can live in it debt-free because I intend to pay my mortgage by the time he would inherit it. Think about what that does for your family. Specifically, let's talk about what that means for African Americans and other people of color. So what we have now is an epidemic where we are seeing individuals who can't get the deeds to their family homes. You know, Big Mama owned a house, and everybody has come behind Big Mama and lived in that house. And then at some point, somebody wants to renovate or someone wants to establish that they, in fact, have the rights to do what they need to do for the property, to improve it, to rent it, whatever they want to do with it, and there's no paperwork on it. So one of the things that you want to make sure of and that we understand is there's stability in the housing and controlled costs. And when that house is paid for, you can pass it on and establish that generational place for your family, for those who come behind you but you also wanna make sure that you take care of your business when you do that. Make sure that you have a will, make sure that your taxes are up to date, or if your taxes are not up to date, that there's a plan to get it up to date so that the generations behind you don't get hit with those types of things. Sorry. You skipped me. No. Oh, no, that's it, that's it, yeah. So <laughs> we're gonna get into, and so I, this is condensed, and I'm not gonna read my whole notes. Um, so recently, the Community Builders Network, and of which we are part, a part of that network as well, some of our other community partners, um, 
issued a document called the um, Affordable Housing Report Card for the mm -hmm. City of St. Louis. And surprise, so many things on there um, came up with an F. Um, so this is a condensed version that is in the document, but I urge you, if you just go on Google and type in St. Louis Affordable Housing Report Card, it's like a 35 page document, but it's appalling some of the things you see. So in St. Louis City and St. Louis County, there were 32,000 mortgage applications in 2020. $4.9 billion in loans were issued. Black applicants were three times as likely to have their applications denied. So this is my participatory portion of my presentation. Why do you think they were denied? Credit. That's one. Lack of down payment. That's another. Income. That's another. Lack of a paper trail to source the funds. That's actually not one of them, but it could tie into it, and I, I know you probably know what you're talking about, because I saw, I saw you out there. Come on. Um, so, what, so, so, so what we've got is um, debt to income ratio, credit history, insufficient collateral, incomplete credit application. So how, yeah, so the, those, those are the things that played into it. Um, the other thing is they were least likely to also receive loans for home improvement refinances. So let's go back to Big Mama's house. You got all the paperwork, you have the deed, you own Big Mama's house. You apply for a rehabilitation loan, but you're denied, and you're more likely to be denied if you're a black person or a person of color in St. Louis City and St. Louis County for that. So what does that tell us about our financial structure when it comes to buying a house? Two words, institutional racism. So some of the things that we have to talk about is how buying a house as a person of color or a single parent is actually an act of revolution. It's an act of revolution, it's an act of dissent because people don't expect you as a single parent, as a single individual, black, white, or whatever, because there's a bias against single people as well when you walk into those institutions. As a woman, as a person on the queer spectrum. There are definitely structures in place in our financial lending institutions that make these decisions that keep those communities from purchasing. And what we see in the St. Louis region, it is largely against African Americans, and particularly in South St. Louis City, because what this study also showed us is that of the money, the $4.9 billion, 78% of those mortgages went to St. Louis County. So if people are applying in St. Louis City and it's $4.9 billion on the table, why is $78,000, 78% of that money going to the county? Because except for pockets in North County, when we know what North County looks like, the majority of St. Louis County is not people of color. So again, the mindset to come out of here with is that purchasing a home is an act of revolution. Challenge the system, understand what the system requires, and then beat the system. Oh, wait a minute, sorry, one more slide. <laughs> sorry, sorry, I was working. I'm sorry, I'm a preacher's child. So, um, Jared mentioned the Bradway Jefferson plan. So this event and some of the other things and developments that we've been talking about. So for instance, we have a, um, they're actually meeting tonight. We have a Bradway Jefferson uh, Development Review Committee. And Jared's organization was so kind to bring their project to the community to get input as to what is needed, is this needed, what are their ins and out of, outs of it, give um, feedback to it, and then they were able to take that feedback, put it in their application, and then go forward, and they got funded. But the Gravoy Jefferson plan is, the dot, is a comprehensive plan that was written with several different community partners. Um, so Jared's organization, DeSales Community Corporation, as well as um, Power Grove Community um, Corporation were our partners. But it is our document that we use to give a roadmap for development within our catchment. And so it was adopted in 2018. I will say that it is the benchmark 
plan in St. Louis City. The city uses it as an example for other community development corporations to develop their plans. Um, but then it talks about specifically, there's a whole section on housing. And yes, again, if you want to lease, there's no shame in it. If you're not ready, don't worry about it. But what we're here to talk about tonight is it talks about the need for down payment assistance, ownership and training and education, what we're doing here, low income and affordable housing development, which we do and will continue to do as long as we're physically able until God strikes me dead. If I'm there, I'm going to do it. Um, mixed income housing and support and investment from within the community. So think about where you lie with those things. Think about what you need to do in order to fulfill the plan and then move forward because again, it's an act of revolution and revolution means that things have to change. And so.